that's why I made the letter this morning. Never made butter before. Been saving my cream from my cows for a long time. And then it started getting nasty. And so you can kind of see the uh, separation, the cream, and then the skim milk down here. And it's, um, um, my goal is to put just the cream into my mixer and try to just skim the milk, skim the cream from the milk. That's what I'm doing right there. Um, but it's just really interesting because um, a lot of my cream went sour. And so it started getting kind of foamy on top. And, um, but I'm told that raw milk doesn't go bad. It just, I mean, it can, get gross but there's so many different uses that you can make with it so um, my goal is to just make butter today but there is such a thing as cultured butter that's basically soured butter um, but soured using the uh, bacteria around on um, in our home. So actually it um, has the same idea as uh, like yogurt, whereas probiotics and stuff like that. Um, so I've always wanted to make cultured uh, yogurt and cultured, I've got some yogurt going right now actually, um, cultured butter, cultured cream, like a sour cream kind of a thing, um, because I'm a strong believer in probiotics. But it was kind of an accident. I just left the cream in the fridge because I was trying to collect enough milk to um, make enough cream so that I could do butter. I waited a little bit too long and I got foamy and kind of started smelling bad. So I started doing some research and um, it's exactly what you want if you're going to make cultured butter. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to give it a try. And who knows, I may not even need to add like salt to this butter um, because the uh, tangy flavor of the uh, probiotics. So it'll just be kind of interesting to see what happens? All right, I'll let that cream rest a little bit and kind of do a little bit more separating, and then um, we'll add some more in. So while that's running, I've got yogurt going over here in my crock pot. So what I'll do with the yogurt is I'll leave it set in my crock pot until the temperature gets to about 95 degrees, give or take a little bit. Typically with yogurt, you want it to get up to like 115 or 125 degrees. But um, this is raw milk. I don't want to heat it so high that um, I kill the good bacteria that is naturally found in my raw milk. And I don't want to kill any of the enzymes that are naturally found in my raw milk. So I'll warm it um, and just get it up to about 95, maybe 100 degrees. I don't want to go over 105. Then I'll add some starter culture of organic grass-fed yogurt that's just plain, no sugar. And I'll add in about a half a cup or so to my gallon and a quart that I've got in the crock pot. Stir that in, 
blend it in nice and then turn it off and then cover it with uh, lots of towels and leave it set for 24 hours. And then that gives the culture a chance to just build up and build up. Oh, it sounds like my processor is starting to work harder. Let's see what's going on. Clumpies of butter. very nice though. We'll see. Okay, so worst case scenario, I don't like the taste of it. Um, I'll give it to my chickens. That rich butter soaked up in their feed adds so much protein for them. So here I'm washing the butter. I got it all clumped together. And then just put some butter on my screen. So now I'm just running it under cold water a bit. And kneading it, squeezing it, like that. It has a little bit of a weird smell, but... The color is nice. I guess the idea is that the cold water keeps it from, it helps the butter firm up and um, hold together. If it was warm water, the um, butter would melt. I've got a cheesecloth here, keeping it nice and cold. Put the butter in the cheesecloth and let it drip. Water's coming out. Rinse it some more.
I guess I'm supposed to do this until the water runs clear. And I guess if the flavor is not real good, um, I can always try adding some honey to this and make my own honey butter. Or garlic or spices, something like that. I'm going to open up my cheesecloth. I've got it folded over several times to make smaller holes. But now I want the bigger holes. And then I'm just going to let this kind of hang and drip dry for a while. My goal today is also to get started making some cheese. Let's see if I get that done today too. Just set that down and create a way to suspend this over my sink because I don't have any cabinets over my sink. Um, I'm too short for cabinets up high. I'll wash my hands. So I've got my butter here. Just looks so happy. And then I need to figure out a way to let it drip. Well, I've got my pot rack. I suppose I could do that. I just don't want any bugs to get to it. So maybe if I covered it with like saran wrap, with a little bit of like a collection area underneath it wrapped so that it could collect underneath the butter. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna work on that. Okay, my yogurt is, I'll just stir this around a little bit. climbing. Not really quite up to 90 degrees yet. Well, it's getting there. So I've got my crock pot set on low, or actually warm, because I want to warm this up nice and slowly. I don't want to hurt any of the bacteria yet. It looks like it's not quite 90 degrees. So we'll let this set for a while longer. The thing about doing raw milk yogurt is when I want to keep the bacterias in there and the enzymes alive, I need to um, not let it get real super hot. So if you look behind me, there's the butter hanging. It's got saran wrap on it. I'm going to um, add some herbs to it and we'll do lasagna tonight and um, be able to have our own 
butter on garlic toast, which that'll be pretty exciting. And so my next job is to study up on what it's gonna take to get cheese made, some mozzarella cheese, because I think that mozzarella cheese would be a really nice thing to have for an Italian dinner plus. So we're having lasagna tonight for supper. It happens to be my husband's, one of my husband's favorite foods. So we're gonna have that. Um, and we'll be able to have some garlic toast with some herbed butter on it because I'm not real sure I'm gonna to be too wild about the flavor of this butter. I don't know, because it smells a little bit tangy. Um, I know it's not gonna be bad. I know it's gonna be exactly what I want for my family, but I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna like the flavor of it. We'll have to just see. So it just sounds like I'm gonna to have to do my cream separation um, all at the same time instead of doing a little bit and then a little bit and then a little bit it sounds like I'm just gonna have to do it all at once and then quick make butter so um, anyway that's the point I'm gonna see if I can make some mozzarella cheese and I'll let you follow along while I do that okay so we did the yogurt thing yesterday Butter turned out great. It had a weird flavor, so I did some herbs into it. And then um, and then we put it on garlic toast with the lasagna. It was great. The yogurt, I did everything right. And I've had it turn out amazing, like smooth and just almost like Greek yogurt where it was just, mm, just perfect. It didn't work out that way today, this time. Not sure what happened but I'm not throwing it out either because it didn't overcook. So the bacteria is still alive, but I ended up with a crock pot full of like this thick layer of yogurt at the top. That was the consistency of um, like small curd cottage cheese and the rest of my crock pot full of whey. So Lori and I tasted the yogurt on top and yeah, it has that little bit of a grainy texture like ricotta cheese or cottage cheese, but just a gentle, beautiful flavor of yogurt. So I'm not gonna throw that out. Um, but I've got a lot of whey left. So, new project. 101 ways to use whey. Yeah, not sure how that's gonna go. But, so what I did, is I strained out using cheesecloth um, the yogurt and then squeezed out as much whey as I could and um, then added some homemade strawberry jam to it because like I mean I would eat it plain but none of the rest of my family would because um, it was very much well it was probably a lot like cottage cheese but um, my family's still a little bit on the picky side. I would eat it like, you know, add some peaches to it. Oh, totally grit. So anyway, this time I made it, you know, smoothed it out as much as I could and then added my homemade strawberry jam to it. And so that's what I've got. So it's just a little dish of like a, a spread. Um, and ideally I shouldn't add anything with sugar in it, but again, I'm not gonna get my family to eat it. But this would be lovely to put in the middle of a, a platter with like Nilla wafers or graham crackers and just dip that into it, all homemade. Oh man, so good. That's not really my dilemma because this tastes good. My dilemma <laughs> is all of that. This is good way that's been developed from the air and the bacteria in my home. So this is like the best, this is like liquid gold. You don't ever throw away, away. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking, I wonder if I added a few tablespoons of this into my dog's food, dry food, if that would be good for them because it's full of probiotics. Um, maybe my cat's food. Um, I mean, aside from people uses, the thing is, I don't want to add it to stuff that I would cook 
with because I don't want to heat this up and kill the bacteria. So I want to keep it fairly cool. So I'm going to put it in the fridge. I know I can soak chicken feed with this overnight and then it's super beneficial. The probiotics, the protein in this and the fact that it's raw milk whey, so good uh, for my chickens. And I might use that for my meat birds as we're coming up to the end of um, our meat birds that are due to be butchered in the next week or so. Um, so I might add that into their feed. But um, I know you can add this with smoothies, but I'm not doing smoothies right now. I know you could drink it plain. That wouldn't taste very good. Um, Anyway, if you guys think of any uses for it, let me know because this is a lot of good whey. This is a gallon of whey. I mean, that's incredible. So I need to figure out how to use this. And I'll try to do a video of having my family eat the um, um, yogurt, cheese dip. Yeah, and see how that goes. But my next project today is going to be, um, I've got these sugar pie pumpkins that I need to bake and then scoop out the flesh. I'll save the seeds for next year. Um, sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they haven't fully matured by the time I picked them. So they're not really ready to be harvested. Um, you know, we'll see. We're trying to harvest the seeds from our cucumbers because I've got heritage um, cucumbers out there and I can save the seeds from that and then I don't have to buy cucumbers next year um, and I want to do that with the cucumbers and my tomatoes okay something I've learned about tomatoes especially if you're getting heirloom tomatoes don't bother especially if you plant a lot of tomatoes and a lot of tomatoes rot out there don't bother picking up plants there I mean my chickens are going to have access to the garden. They're going to eat everything. I am going to have volunteer tomato plants next year like crazy. So all I have to do then is just transplant them to where I want them to go. And the work's already done for me. They're already hardened off. I haven't had to take up room in my uh, house. And they're going to plant themselves. And, you know, then I just go through and pick which ones I want to keep. I have no idea what they're going to be, but because I'm only working with two types, out there in my garden. Well, I've got two or three, maybe four types, but they're all types that I want to use next year as well. I've got the San Marzanos. They're like huge Romas. Totally love them. I'll do them every year. And then I've got the um, Romas, but these Romas were a little bit different. They were long, thin Romas. Great. But anyway, I'm getting off track. I'm talking about my garden right now. Um, what to do with the way. So I'm going to be looking up on one of my favorite sites, which is Pinterest, to see if I can figure out uses for whey, because this is so good. I would have preferred we had yogurt, but I don't know, maybe this is gonna go longer. I still don't know what it was that I did that caused this to happen in the first place. I wish I did because I would, I would totally repeat it, do it again. Only I would use it like cottage cheese. Just don't tell my family because um, we love cottage cheese. Cottage cheese and peaches or cottage cheese and apple butter is my husband's favorite. So yeah, we're gonna, what to do with the whey? Oh man, maybe a salad dressing, but I wouldn't want to harm the bacteria. I don't know. If you guys think of anything, you know, put a comment down below and uh, let me know because I'm all about using whey. I just have to make it so that I can kind of hide it so that my family doesn't know that I'm using whey and yet I know I'm getting good things into them. So like a salad dressing, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. So let me know what your ideas are and then I will, con um, I'll put out another video on making mozzarella cheese. Hopefully that goes a little bit better, but We'll see.